Hello, statistics students. This is Jamie Amy, and this video is on our discussion about section 7.3, estimating a population standard deviation or variance. Okay, you see here a different type of distribution. Remember in stats class, when you hear the word distribution, you want to think the shape. We've talked about uniform distribution, which was a rectangle, normal distribution, student T distribution, which were both bell-shaped curves, and here we have chi-squared distribution. It is bell-shaped, um, so it has some similar features as normal and student T, except that you can see it's not symmetric. Uh, you can see if you focus on the blue curve, which has a degree of freedom uh, being 10, how much that differs uh, from the red curve, which has a degree of freedom being 20. Uh, remember that your degree of freedom equals n minus 1. So to get a degree of freedom of 10, our n must have been 11. Um, you might pick up on that the higher the degree of freedom, the more of a symmetric bell-shaped curve it will become. Hmm. Okay, so those are some of the basic features. Uh, now, what's important to know about the chi-square distribution is it is not for proportions. It's not about means. It's only, it, uh, data can only take on this distribution or this shape if your data is standard deviations or variances. So standard deviations and variances are all positive. That's why you can, um, well, hopefully you'll notice that zero, your origin is right here. So all of the data the distribution is entirely in the first quadrant of the rectangular coordinate system. Contrary to our um, standard normal distribution, normal distribution and student T distribution, that had, well, standard normal, had zero in the middle. And so that would take place in the first and the second quadrants of the uh, rectangular coordinate system there. It's like an X axis and a Y axis, what you guys uh, first learned it as. Okay, I'm going to erase all of this and point out some of those things that I was just rambling about um, in a little bit nicer form. Number one, it is not symmetric, but as the degree, degrees of freedom, df equals n minus 1, increase, the distribution becomes more symmetric and approaches a normal distribution. And that was this graph that I was saying how as your degrees of freedom in increase, it'll approach that bell-shaped curve. Number two. The values of chi-squared can be zero or positive, but cannot be negative. And that is saying um, it all takes place in the first quadrant. Number three, critical values of chi-squared are found using program Math 200B. Uh, Math 200B requires two inputs. The first thing you'll need is the degrees of freedom, which is Real simple to find, it's just whatever your sample size is, minus one. And the second input you need is the area to the right of the critical value that you're looking for. So those are common features you guys are used to. Very similar to student T distribution, um, except student T distribution required area to the left and degrees of freedom. Okay. Oh, program math 200B. This is something that I will... Um, put on your calculator for you. You can go to the Mass Success Center and have them put it on your calculator. You can get it from a classmate if you have the right cable. Um, it's a program that is not already on your Texas instrument, but it will be, <laughs> or it can be, if you plug in um, the cable uh, to a calculator that already has it. So make sure you get that done either from me or from the Mass Success Center. Um, if you do not want to use Program Math 200B, odds are you don't want to use a Texas instrument at all. So you're using a whole different um, uh, platform of technology, or maybe you're using the tables instead, um, the paper charts. Uh, that's fine. There are ways you or you can get through all of these problems using the paper charts. Um, I just like to do this and the rest of the class with the um, technology. All right, let's try an example. Constructing a confidence interval requires cutting off both tails. We know that to be true anytime you're asked. Construct a confidence interval. You've got your best guess in the middle, 
and then you go out some margin of error, but then you cut off both tails. All confidence intervals are two-tailed tests. Okay, now this one says finding the critical values, uh, chi-squared sub L, and the second one is chi-squared sub R. That would be read chi-squared left and chi-squared right. Responding to a 99% level of confidence for a sample of size 30, round to three decimal places. Okay, so we're going to uh, sketch a chi-squared distribution graph. We're gonna add the confidence level to help us find the area to the right of each of the critical values that we're interested in. Okay, so this is just a general uh, chi-squared um, sketch, if you will. Uh, so get comfortable sketching these. Just make yourself a right angle, put the zero right there, and then try to make your bell-shaped curve um, not quite symmetric. Oh, and then label your horizontal axis chi-squared. Okay, uh, we're going to cut off both of the tails this time. Well, as we always do in confidence intervals, I'm gonna use dark blue. So I'm gonna cut off this tail right there. Okay. And I'll cut off this tail as well. Okay, so two tails, and now we need to put our 99% somewhere. That would be a confidence level, or CL, of 0 0.99, leaving us with 1% in the tails, uh, but we have to divide that 1% in half. 1% as a decimal looks like that. So if we cut it in half, we're left with 0 0.005 in each of the tails. Remember that whenever I write anything above the axis, like I'm doing right now, I'm talking about the area of the shaded region. Contrary to if I write something below the x-axis, like this zero, for example, that would be a critical value. So we are currently looking for this critical value, chi-squared, as well as this critical value, chi-squared but we have to differentiate between the two. We can't call them both chi-squared in the same problem. Um, so we do a sub L for the one on the left and a sub R for the one on the right. Okay, we are going to start by finding chi-squared left. So we're gonna find this one first, chi-squared left. It's kind of close to zero, but we don't know how close. Uh, but it's definitely a positive because all of the values are positive because we're only in the first quadrant. Okay, so that's our critical value we are interested in. So take out your TI, and I'm doing this with you, so follow along, do it with me. Okay, hit uh, program. It's right below stat. You should have five programs there, um, if not more. If uh, the program was loaded correctly, you have five. We only run option three or the math 200B option, but math 200B is dependent on all the others. So you have to have all five, okay? If someone loaded on your calculator and you only have math 200B, you gotta go redo it. Okay, so open math 200B and it should be on your screen now with your blinking cursor. You have to hit enter. Okay, now we have um, seven different options, and the one we are looking for right now is critical chi-squared, because we're trying to find that critical chi-squared, critical chi-squared left <laughs> uh, critical value right now. Okay, so critical chi-squared, and degrees of freedom, let's see, 30 was our sample size, so that's n equals 30 which means our degrees of freedom is 29. Degrees of freedom is one less than 30, so 29. Okay, 29, hit enter. And now it says right tail. So this is the critical value we're interested in. The area to the right of that. Ooh, this is tricky because we're so used to going left. Normal distribution, standard normal, and student T, we always looked at what the area to the left was. This is our first time where we've got to look at what the area to the right is. For example, that's all this stuff to the right. So we've got the 0.99 plus another 
0.005. So our area to the right is 0.99 plus another 0.005, which is 0.995. Okay, so right tail, type it in, 0 0.995. Hit enter. Now wait for it. <laughs> it takes a moment to bounce between all those other programs. And mine says done now. Uh, if you got 13.12114889, you got the same as me. Nice job. And so it turns out that that uh, value on the x-axis there, the horizontal axis, is 13.12. One, because they asked us for three decimal places. And you write it like this, chi-square sub L, or chi-square left, equals 13.121. Okay, I'm going to erase all of the, um, the stuff that I've handwritten on this slide. So, and I want you to now try to do the exact same thing, except try and find chi-square right. So chi-square sub capital R, all right? Um, pause this video and try that now. Welcome back. And if you cut off your two tails like this, 0 0.99 is in the middle, 0 0.005 is here. This is the um, critical value that we're interested in right now. The area to the right of that is 0.05. 0, 5. So if you hit program, math 200B, enter, selected critical chi squared, enter your degrees of freedom as 29, enter your area to the right as 0 0.005 and ran it, accurate to three decimal places, you should get 52.336. If you did not get that, pause this video and try it again. My um, calculator steps are right here for you. And if you did get it on the first try, nice job. Everyone will get there with a little practice. Okay, if we're gonna construct a confidence interval for a population variance, sigma squared, or a population standard deviation, sigma, uh, we can use these two formulas here. This would be uh, your confidence interval for um, a variance, so sigma squared, and this would be your confidence interval for a standard deviation, sigma. Okay, you are welcome to use those formulas. You have everything you need. Uh, they're not dependent on too many variables. Uh, you need n, so that's sample size. You need lowercase s, so that's the sample standard deviation. You need chi-squared right, which you can find either using the table or math 200B, and you need chi-squared left. Those four inputs, carefully uh, typed into your calculator, and you'll get your confidence interval. Um, and the option that I would like to use is program math 200B, enter. This time we're not going to choose critical chi-squared, because that's not what we're looking for. This time we're looking for infer about sigma. So we're going to select that program. We're going to um, then give the program uh, S. We're going to give the program N. We're going to choose if we want our confidence interval to be for sigma, so standard deviations, or if we want it to be for sigma squared, which is variances. We'll enter the C level, um, and then we will wait to have the program run, and it will output our confidence interval for us. Let's try it. A group of 22 subjects took an IQ test. The subjects had a standard deviation IQ score of 14.3. To the nearest tenth, construct a 95% confidence interval estimate of sigma, the standard deviation of the population from which the sample was obtained. Okay, um, normal distribution can be assumed if we, we just look at the histogram of our 22 subjects, and we've got somewhat of a bell-shaped curve there. So we can move forward with um, constructing the confidence interval. Uh, we have n equals 22. 
It says that the subjects had a standard deviation IQ score of 14.3. That would be lowercase s because that's the sample standard deviation, not sigma. That's not the population standard deviation. Um, they want our confidence level to be 0 0.95. They want us to make this about sigma. And I think we have everything we need. So pick up your TIs and let's try this together. Start by hitting program, it's right below stat. Scroll down to math 200B. Hit enter. All right, the one we did last time was critical chi-squared. That's because we were looking for critical values chi-squared left and chi-squared right. This time, we're going to select the fifth one, infer about sigma. They want S from you, so 14.3. They want N from us, so 22. Now we have to make a decision. Are we trying to set up a confidence interval for sigma? Are we trying to set up a confidence interval for sigma squared? Are we, uh, and three, four, and five are, are we trying to run a hypothesis test uh, for sigma being less than some constant? Are we trying to run a hypothesis test for sigma being not equal to some constant? And the last one, five, is are we trying to run a hypothesis test for sigma being greater than some constant? Okay, nothing about hypothesis testing here. That's all chapter eight. Um, if it were a t hypothesis test, it would say test the claim that. So three, four, and five are out. I'm looking at options one and two, and they want us to set this confidence interval up for sigma. So it would be one, infer about for sigma interval. Next one's confidence level, so 0.95. And when you hit enter, it should say computing, which is nice, makes you wait a little bit. And there you go, your lower confidence uh, limit is 11.00172434 and your upper confidence limit is 20.4356.2504. Here are the um, key by key um, Texas Instrument calculator steps that we just went through. And rounding to one decimal place, oh yeah, here it is, to the nearest tenth we get 11.0 and 20.4. Based on this result, we have 95% confidence that the limits of 11.0 and 20.4 contain, contain the true value of sigma. So contain the true standard deviation of IQ scores. Sounds about right, IQ scores. Standard deviation of somewhere between 11 and 20 IQ points. Okay, um, why don't you pause this video and try numbers one, two, and three. Welcome back for question number one. If you entered math 200B, critical chi-squared, you had to give it degrees of freedom of six. That came from N equals seven. So degrees of freedom would be one less than that, six. Uh, this part's kind of tricky, or I, in my experience, I've seen that this is the part where people get caught the most. It's that right tail. And if you're just trying to do this in your head, if you're looking at 90% and going, well, what's there in the right tail? Some of us can do it, um, and with practice, we could all do it. But in the meantime, just don't try to do that to yourself. Just sketch a little graph. It does not need to be perfect by any means. And all you have to do is cut off the two tails, put 0 0.90 in the middle. That leaves you with 10%, um, so 5% in each tail. 5% as a decimal is 0 0.05 in each of the tails. So in this problem, we were looking for chi-square right. So that's this one. That's chi-squared right right there. So you can see now that the area to the right of that, or the right tail input for that program, is 0 0.05. And if you run that correctly, 
um, you get 12.592. Okay, number two, if you chose Math 200B, critical chi-squared, your degrees of freedom this time is three, probably easy to get because you see sample size of four, so degrees of freedom is three. This part, not as easy to get, but it's the 95 in the center, leaving us with 5%, so 2.5% in each tail, 0, 0.25, and another 0 0.025 over here. And this time we're looking for chi-squared left, so we're looking for this one. So the area to the right of that would be the 0.95 plus 0 0.025, and that is where this 0 0.975 came from. If you run that correctly, you should get 0 0.216. Okay, number three wanted us to set up a confidence interval. So similar start, Math 200B, enter, but this time you have to select infer about sigma, type in the standard deviation, 0.44, type in the sample size, 50, and uh, it was the first option, sigma interval, and the reason we knew it was sigma interval was because of this right here, sigma. Confidence level is 0.95, hit enter, and to two decimal places you should get 0 0.37 for your lower confidence limit and 0 0.55 for your upper. And that is our discussion on section 7.3. I will see you guys next time. Yeah.